Hello friends, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Michelle Fondon and I'm the author of Twin Flame Romance, The Journey to Unconditional Love. I'm also the author of Twin Flame Union, Seven Keys to a Healthy Twin Flame Journey. All of my books are available in paperback, Kindle and Audible books. If you're new to my channel, welcome. Thank you for subscribing below. Click on the bell, scroll up to all for all notifications. And thank you for giving the video a thumbs up. I do readings, 30, 60, and 90 minute readings, twin flame romance, general readings, life path and purpose. You can book that on my website, michellefondenauthor.com. Welcome to the Divine Feminine Empowerment Reading. This reading is good for the next two weeks. Today is Monday, June 19th, 2023. To start, we are going to say a blessing over the cards. Dear God, Jesus, Holy Spirit, Mother Mary, Archangels, Angels of God, Divine Feminines, Guardian Angels, let this reading be the highest light and love of God the Father. Let it bring light, love, and truth to everyone involved. Archangel Michael, please stand guard, casting away any lower energies with your sword of light. Romance angels, twin flame angels, please help divine feminines around the globe understand what they need to know to learn and to grow. So we are going to start with a fairy tarot deck today, which I absolutely adore. I love this deck. So angels and guides, what do divine feminines need to know to learn and to grow? What is their energy for the next two weeks, please? The eight of winter. Divine Feminine? No, not the Eight of Winter. <laughs> this is a heads up Divine Feminine. Eight of Winter. Do you see this woman here? She's stuck. She's stuck on a little patch of ice floating in the middle of a pond or a lake. This woman here is floating on a patch of ice all by herself. She feels like she's trapped, but she's not trapped. Do you see how close dry land is or icy land, but still it's land. Dry land is very close to her. All she has to do is pick up one foot and put herself on dry land. Okay, this is a metaphor, <laughs> right? This means that you feel like you are stuck. You feel like you can't move forward. You feel like you can't move on. And nothing could be further from the truth, Divine Feminine. If you haven't yet viewed my Twin Flame Story vlog that I posted two weeks ago, it's been about two weeks now, I'm gonna put that right here. It's a story about how I felt stuck how I felt stuck in my life and on my twin flame journey. If you haven't yet viewed it, go ahead and view it. But this is about, uh, it's almost like a self-fulfilling prophecy, if you will. It's like, I can't get out of this stuckness. I don't know how to get out of this stuckness. And your angels and guides are telling you, Divine Feminine, you absolutely can get out of the stuckness. You absolutely can do this. Let's go ahead and take a look at what else your angels want you to know. The Eight of Winter represents the Eight of Swords. Okay, it's a sword suit in traditional tarot. Angels and guides, how else can Divine Feminine move through this Eight of Winter energy? Please and thank you. Princess of Winter. Oh my goodness, look at these winter cards. It's summer here in the Northern Hemisphere, or at least on Wednesday, it will be summer in the Northern Hemisphere. But all these winter cards. The Princess of Winter is telling me, Divine Feminine, tell yourself the truth. Tell yourself the truth. Speak the truth to yourself. Don't sugarcoat it. Do not make excuses for why you are stuck. Don't make excuses anymore. The excuse is over, finished, done. If you want to move forward, you absolutely positively can move forward. The Princess of Winter is about being blunt with yourself. It's about being truthful, blunt, sharp, meaning 
<laughs> you need to tell yourself the hardcore facts. You need to say, look, if I feel like I'm stuck, it's because I'm not doing A, B, or C things. If I'm feeling stuck, it's because I am not making positive changes in my own life in every way I possibly can. Whew. Wow, strong, strong energy. The thing is, the message that I'm giving to you now, Divine Feminine, the Princess of Winter, it's like, this is the message. It's about being truthful to yourself. It's about dropping the story, dropping the story that you tell to yourself. We all tell ourselves stories somehow, sometime, somewhere, on a certain level in our lives. I am, and you know, I do mention this as well in the vlog, but I've been on Weight Watchers again for 51 days. <laughs> I just know this because every time I log into the app to log in my food, it tells me how many days I've logged in. And I've logged in every day since I started. And I am finding the limiting beliefs that I had in the past surrounding weight loss and maintenance of weight. And I'm just discovering a new layer each day, it seems. And so we tell ourselves these untruths. We tell ourselves these stories. And if you want to get unstuck, if you want to circumvent the aid of winter, Divine Feminine, you're going to have to stop repeating the same old stories to yourself. You're gonna to have to stop repeating those excuses to yourself as to why you can't do the things that you really wanna do in life, why you can't have the things that you really wanna have in your life. It's all a mental story. It's the truth. <laughs> I'm gonna get one more qualifier for you. King of coins in reverse, king of coins in reverse. And it said ruled by materialism, ruled by materialism. This could be the fact that you are stuck eight of winter because you are ruled by materialism, external appearances, how it appears on the outside, how others might perceive you, for example. Or it could literally just mean that you're more worried about money than the rest of your life, or you're more worried about material comfort than the rest of your life. It's gonna look different for each person. Be careful of that. Be careful because the planet Venus is stationing to go retrograde, and it will be retrograde for 40 days and 40 nights, and Venus can be the planet of materialism. So I have a feeling that as Venus is moving retrograde, you might be faced with the why, the why of Venusian type things, money, love, beauty, joy, the pleasures of life. And you might be faced with the why have I not been truthful to myself? Why have I not been honest with myself? Why have I felt like I'm stuck when really I can help myself get unstuck? So let's see what else. This is the Heal Yourself reading cards. And we're going to see what else Divine Feminine needs to know to learn and to grow for the next two weeks on your Twin Flame journey. Pride. Yeah, pride. That's more of this, King of Cups. King of Coins in reverse, the materialism. Look at that pride, vanity, pride, vanity and pride. This has so much to do with Venusian type things. And it's just going to depend on where it falls in your personal astrological chart. But as Venus is going retrograde, it's going to make you reflect on those types of things, such as pride, for example. But let's take a look at what the angels have to say about this. Pride. You may be acting out of arrogance or vanity. Humility is the key. When you are prideful, you can become harsh and not conscious of your weaknesses. This can temporarily make you feel more powerful and superior to others. 
whilst at the same time cause you to be judgmental, unteachable, and hardened. Have you been fighting, quarreling, or disagreeing with others? Are you always trying to prove a point and defend your position? Do you think that you are always right? By holding on to shadow pride, you are stopping yourself from progressing mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. Stop overestimating your importance and learn to be humble. When you are too proud, you cannot hear other people's advice, cannot receive their assistance. Empowerment means that you can be soft, caring, aware, and gentle. Recognize that you need other people's support to achieve true success. So, you know, I have a feeling that this eight of winter, this sense of being prideful or feeling like you are stuck and cannot move forward or that you're all alone on your private island and you have nobody surrounding you that supports you, that loves you in a way that you want to be loved. I think it's time you told the truth to yourself. Is some of that about pride? Is some of that about materialism, about not appearing weak to others? Is it about not appearing to be different from others? That can be a sense of pride too. Because if you follow the crowd, then you don't stick out. I'm gonna give a really silly example, okay? I have never quite been one to follow the crowd. I'm a little bit of a rebel, so I haven't been one to follow the crowd, but there's something that super annoys me, and that is when something is very trendy. It super annoys me. And the latest trend that is quite annoying to me is pickleball. Everywhere, everywhere you go, you hear people talking about pickleball, pickleball this, pickleball that, how great pickleball is. And it seems that so many people have jumped on the bandwagon. And you know, that's just one example. There's so many different examples. But if it's easier for you to jump on the bandwagon of trends, for example, if you, if you notice that people in your yoga studio or your gym are only wearing Lululemon clothes now, which I think Lululemon's actually on the outs and it's a brand called Allo, A-L-O, that's on the ins, because I go to a high-end gym, so I see these things. But for example, if you notice that everybody in your gym is wearing Lululemon, you're like, I gotta jump on the Lululemon bandwagon. It's about vanity, it's about pride, it's about materialism, it's about trying to fit in and not being your own person. So I think what this is trying to say is that in order to step out of weakness, in order to step out and be among other people, but be unique in yourself, it's time to let go of pride. It's time to be okay with being kind of an outlier or out on your own and not being afraid of being embarrassed or being seen as being weak. And so that is like the huge lesson. But in order to do that, you have to be really honest with yourself. If you're the person, for example, who is jumping on the pickleball wagon because everybody else is jumping on that wagon, is it because you truly adore this sport? Or is it because your neighbors are doing it, your friends are doing it, your husband or wife or boyfriend or girlfriend is doing it? Is it because everyone in your environment is doing it? Is that the reason why? Is it because of pride and vanity? Or is it because you truly feel it in your heart that it's the best thing since sliced bread? Because if you hear the way people talk about it in my environment, <laughs> you would think it was the best thing since sliced bread. But that's just one example of how this can get in the way of your spiritual growth, your mental growth, your even physical growth, right? They say birds of a feather flock together. So for example, if you've been trying to lose weight, and I mentioned Weight Watchers at the very beginning of this, and for me personally, I don't know anybody who's doing Weight Watchers. I know the people in the rooms that are doing Weight Watchers, but in my personal life, I don't know anybody who's doing Weight Watchers. So 
if you think about it, that makes me an outlier. It makes me different. It makes me open to like shaming or somebody saying like, that's so stupid. That's so old. Why would you do that? Why wouldn't you do keto or intermittent fasting? So it does open you up to criticism, if you will. But for example, if you have been thinking about, I need to lose some weight and all of the people around you are overweight or obese, birds of a feather flock together. If you start to go on your own weight loss journey, you will be different than everybody else in your environment. If everybody else in your environment is either overweight, obese, or morbidly obese, you're gonna be so different. You're gonna stick out. And people around you might not like that. They might make fun of you or say you're gonna fail or say like, why are you even trying this? So let's see, divine feminines in the ethereal collective. Which one of you has a message for Divine Feminines in our collective here over the next two weeks? Oh, we've got two. Well, I'm only gonna pick the top one because the readings for these are very long <laughs> and it's Sarada Devi, the Divine Mother. Sarada Devi, the Divine Mother. And it says, unconditional love exists within me. The presence of love is the absence of judgment. Ooh, we just talked a lot about judgment, didn't we? About if you're an outlier, if you're not following the crowd, following the trends, wearing the same clothes as everybody else, or playing the same sport as everybody else, it does leave you open to judgment. It leaves you open to judgment when you are different from your peers, when you're different from your colleagues, when you're different from the people you go to the gym with, and when you're different from everybody else. It leaves you open to criticism and judgment. But let's take a look at what Sarada Devi has to say. Sarada Devi, the Divine Mother, who is she? Sri Sarada Devi embodies the feminine power that initiates seekers onto a spiritual path through unconditional love. Sarada Devi was born in, okay, bear with me here, <laughs> Jerumbati, India in 1853 to poor Brahmin parents. As a little girl, she worshiped a clay figurine of the goddess Kali, meditated and began to have visions. At age five, she was betrothed to the priest of Dakshinwar Kali Temple, a beloved mystic named Ramakrishna. Ten years later, she joined him at the temple and they began their lifelong spiritual marriage together. Shraddha's husband, Ramakrishna, performed the Shodoshi Puja, the Shodashi Puja with her. This meant that Shraddha was positioned in the seat of the goddess Kali and was addressed as Sri Ma or Holy Mother. Shraddha is considered to be Ramakrishna's first disciple. They both became notable mystics with large international followings. Shraddha helped form the monastic order for the devotees of Ramakrishna after he passed. Because she was so beloved, a monastic order was founded for women in her honor. She paved the way for future generations of women to enter the spiritual life. When your soul selects her card, Shraddha Devi loved all her disciples unconditionally and equally. In her teachings, she emphasized that there is no such thing as a stranger. She encouraged her devotees to understand that everyone we meet is actually a part of us and is connected to us. And that if we want to experience true peace, we need to own the fault and judgment that we project onto others. We need to see our own faults and forgive them with love. Sharada Devi whispers gently to us, no one is a stranger, my child, this whole world is your own. So this is like super interesting. And I, I was thinking to myself, I'm judgmental of all those people who play pickleball. <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> um, would that be a part of me in another incarnation? Perhaps, perhaps that would be me in another incarnation where I would find the need to have to follow the crowd. I would find the need to have to blend in with the crowd and not be seen as a part, not be seen as different from others. 
But Shraddha Devi, the divine mother, is saying unconditional love exists within me. The presence of love is the absence of judgment. I have a feeling that this week, in the next two weeks for Divine Feminines, this is more about not judging yourself. It's more about not judging yourself than judging others. And here's why I say that, because we start with this card, Eight of Winter, Eight of Swords. We start with this card. And this woman in the Eight of Swords, she feels trapped within herself. She feels trapped within her own limiting beliefs. She feels stuck within herself in her own life. It's not that she's looking to the outside and judging others. It's more like she's looking to the outside going, why can't I be more like others rather than accepting herself for who she is? And if she starts to accept herself for who she is and make the changes from within first and tell the truth to herself about why she's not satisfied with herself in her own life, then she'll be able to get off of that little ice island that she's put herself on. Nobody's put her on that ice island. She's put herself on that ice island. And when she looks to the princess of winter, the truth, the unadulterated truth about her life, her shortcomings, where she is, how to overcome obstacles, how to get unstuck, and knowing that part of that not wanting to get unstuck is vanity, is pride, is like, what if I don't look like others when all these transformations are done? What if I don't fit in with a crowd when all of these transformations are done? And you might not, Divine Feminine. You probably won't look like others. You probably won't fit in with the crowd. And that's okay. And you have to be okay with that. Because what you signed up for in this lifetime, if you are a divine feminine, what you signed up for in this lifetime is something so beyond the status quo. It's so beyond the middle road. There's nothing inherently wrong with the middle road, divine feminine. But that's not what you signed up for in this lifetime. You signed up for something so much bigger. And so when you can get over the vanity, when you can get over the pride, when you can get over what you look like to the outside world, how the outside world might judge you, might think of you, might look at you funny. If you can get over that, then you can stop the judgment towards yourself. You can fill yourself with unconditional love. And then maybe as you move forward in your own life, you'll be able to stop judgment of others and just recognize that those things that they're doing, that's their path. That's their path. And there's nothing wrong with that path. It's just their path. It's a different area of life. It's a different development of the soul growth. So I hope this was helpful, Divine Feminine Twin Flame. I want to thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for subscribing to my channel below. Click on the bell, scroll up to all for all notifications. And thank you for giving the video a thumbs up. Thank you for sharing this video with other Divine Feminine Twin Flames. And thank you so much for your support of my YouTube channel. You can buy one of my 10 published books. You can join the Divine Feminine Bootcamp number one or two. The links are below or my meditation course. And I will see you in the next video.